Well, hey there, and welcome to the Apartment Building Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Blanc. And if you haven't done so already, you got to head over to DealMakerLiveEvent.com and grab tickets to DealMaker Live July 16 to 18. It's our annual conference in Dallas, Texas, and it surely will sell out because we're going to be in the same exact space. It was awesome last year. We already have Robert Helms with Real Estate Guys confirmed, Tom Wilwright, Rich Dad, advisor to Robert Kiyosaki. We also already have some of the biggest influencers in the multifamily confirmed. We got Adam Adams, Neil Bawa, Dan Hanford are already going to be there. So it is going to be the place to be uh, this summer. And you're also going to hear from people who just did their first deal. So we're not going to have just the big guns there. It's that's nice, but really, it's really where you connect with real people doing real deals. And that's going to be at Dealmaker Live in the summer. So it's DealmakerLiveEvent.com. Head over there and grab tickets and grab them while there you still can. All right. So today what we want to do on the show is we want to talk about cost segregation. Okay. We want to talk about what is it? And most importantly, is it, is it appropriate for whatever building you have? If it's small, if it's big, how many stories, how old is it? When did you buy it? Should I take the bonus depreciation now? Should I spread it out? Uh, how should I exit this? What about this thing I've heard called recapture? And those are all the things we're going to talk about on this show. So let's do this. All right, if you're ever interested in passively investing in multifamily syndications, if that's you right now, you're not exactly sure what it entails, then check out my free report we created. It's at themichaelblank.com forward slash report. And it really talks about, hey, what's the better investment for you, the stock market or real estate? And it kind of compares them side to side, some of pros, some of cons. So if you're interested in that, check out that report. If you want to take the next step and you actually want to uh, hear about deals that we at Nighthawk Equity have coming up, then head over to nighthawkequity.com, click the join button so you can join our investor club that you'll fill out a short form and set up a, a phone call with us. We get to know each other a little bit. And then down the road, we can share with you some upcoming things that we have working out. So that's nighthawkequity.com and then click on the join button. So that's for all you passive investors. And if you're active, sometimes investing passively is a great way to get into the active because you kind of see how it goes and see what your investors go through. So I encourage you guys to check out that free report or just join the club and get to know us a little better. We'd love to have you in an upcoming opportunity. All right. So today, cost seg, like we talked about, our guest today is Terry Judge, founder and CEO of Core Solutions. And the reason he's on the show is because we use Core Solutions on several of our past deals. And we love Core. They really take care of us. They know what they're doing. They're affordable. They take a consultative approach to cost segregation. So they're not just engineers that do a bunch of stuff. They involve their CPA and they really do some strategic consulting for us on tax planning for us and our passive investors. Terry knows a lot about cost segregation as well as any other tax benefits you can get through the tax code that involves some kind of engineering analysis, such as cost segregation. So we're going to talk about things like what is it exactly? Um, should it be? Is it for only large properties? Is it for small uh, properties? When does it make sense? Uh, how you know how old can the property be? Does it have to be only for properties that by this year, two years? What is all that? And then there's a couple of other secrets that uh, that Terry shares with us about tax codes that that I didn't even know about that are really out there uh, for us to use as well. So he's got a lot of business experience. He's been doing a cost seg specifically in the last 14 years, and he's done a lot. of He's a nationwide company. So with further ado, let's get Terry on the show. <laughs> Terry, welcome to the show today. Hey, Michael. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great Sorry. to have you guys. You guys have done several of our cost segs, and I wanted to bring you on because, well, we like you guys. You guys do a good job. And I thought, hey, you know what? I haven't talked about cost seg in a little while. Why don't we have the CEO of Core Services be on the show to talk about that? So I'm really, really glad that you're here. Give us a little background uh, before we you know, get into it about yourself a little bit because you have years of business experience. So tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, well, the white hair now, geez. So been doing the, uh, you know, number one, thanks for all you do in this multifamily space. It's just awesome. And glad to be associated with your team. Um, been doing cost seg for 14 years now, Michael. Um, you know, I was in the energy space prior to starting this business. I have another company called Green Building Advisors. And I, you know, I stumbled upon cost segregation. My accountant kind of brought this to me and I was just blown away. And I could not believe that there was such a massive gap between the IRS, the, the, the investor, 
and um, um, you know the 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 um, the government. You know the government, the the CPA, and the investor. Those three. And I just this was just a missed. It was always kind of an afterthought. But 14 years ago, can you imagine? Like nobody knew this existed. I mean, this was just something that was missed constantly. It's still missed and underutilized um, today. But we we plugged in. I put together a, a great team. We're national and. You know, we've done you know thousands of studies now. We're working with great organizations like Nighthawk, and it's just been amazing. We've uh, been able to recover over one billion dollars now, uh, with a B. And uh, you know, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and I'm really excited to be on your show today because I I wanted to touch on a few points that even for you know syndicators and your you know your passive or your active. You know, how do you exit a, 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 a property? You know, you, people are worried about you know, 1031 exchanges. So cost seg just really fits nicely with many scenarios. And we've, play, we've been in all the scenarios. So, you know, I, I, I always, I still, I'm still fascinated. Sometimes like we get into situations, I'm like, wow, that's, I've never heard that before after, you know, 14 years. Um, but, you know, but we've heard most of it. And, um, and the outcome is significant in almost every situation. And people always ask me, you know, what's what's a you know what's too small of a building? Well, because of the new tax rulings that just kicked in, the you know we're now looking at people that are buying you know their first multi-unit or their first multi-family, I should say, maybe you know five hundred grand, six hundred grand. Those now qualify. Before it was always like a million and above. That was always the sweet spot when we would look at an opportunity. Now it's like half of that. I mean, and it's it's awesome for somebody that's just now getting into the multifamily space. And I know that's one of your passions is helping people kind of buy their first deal. And when they hear about cost irrigation and they can mitigate and eliminate their taxable income for years, <laughs> maybe, you know, for a long time, maybe the, the full time that they hold that property before they exit, they're literally mitigating their, you know, their taxes down to, in some cases, zero. Yeah, a lot of listeners probably already kind of know what a cost segregation is, and they may not think it's for them. Can you just give us a brief introduction into what cost segregation is and and why someone why to use it? Why is it even there? Yeah, yeah, great, great, great point, great question. Um, so cost segregation in the layman's terms, it, it is just a way to accelerate depreciation. So for a multifamily, the normal accounting, the, the traditional what we call straight line method allows a apartment building to depreciate over 27 and a half years. Where so and that's what most CPAs that's how they will depreciate that asset. With the other way, there's another pathway in the tax code, which is called cost segregation, and that allows a building or apartment building to depreciate, you know, over a much faster pace. So, for instance, instead of waiting 27 and a half years, you now can write your property off over a five-year period, and that accelerates all that money into today's dollar. So you're taking advantage of time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar down the road. So in layman's terms, you're simply taking that money in today's dollars. It's creating all this de depreciation that you're now going to offset your ordinary income. And then that has a 20 year carry forward. So I think people have heard the, the depreciation in real estate in general. Uh, why, what is a cost segregation? What, what do you guys do uh, exactly? So great question again. So we go in and, and we break the building down into components. So we look at, there's basically nine units of a property according to the IRS. And some of those are like me mechanical, plumbing, wiring. Um, we get into the irrigation, drainage, retaining walls, fixtures, you know, non load bearing walls. So a lot of your interior components inside the building, right down to the, the electrical jack behind the wall, that's all what's considered uh, personal property and so what we do as an engineering firm, we just break apart the building from real property, which is section 1250, and we put it into personal property at section 1245, which basically makes this legal at the federal level. So we're, we're identifying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of components inside the property, and actually on, on the exterior, we'll touch on that in a second, that basically call, qualifies for shorter life. And that's how technically we make the magic happen all right, so yep. so the I, so what, the IRS code has depreciation for different materials like wiring or carpeting ex exactly, and so what yes. you're doing is you're breaking a building down to its different parts, and then you're applying the tax code the depreciation schedule to those things, 
And if you do that, instead of it taking 27 and a half years to write code, depreciate the property, you know, the vast majority can be done, like you said, in five years. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people don't, aren't aware of there's been, there's, there's probably over there's well, actually today there's been over 300 court cases, IRS rulings and memorandums that have come out on, on what qualifies for shorter life, not to get too technical, but they have all these permanency rules. If you remove the asset out of the building, how much damage does it cause? And if it doesn't cause lots of damage or certain things just wear out, you know, over time, that's basically what constitutes how we can take each component and move it into the shorter lives. Now, you mentioned earlier, hey, does this work for smaller properties? And there's two aspects of that. One is, hey, this cost segregation actually costs money. Like someone's got to pay you guys to hop on a plane and do all this stuff. <laughs> so there's, a, you know, there's an ROI cost benefit thing. And the other one is legislation or tax code related. Is there something that, uh, that changed in the tax code recently that made, it, uh, made smaller properties qualify more for cost segregation? Yeah, so starting September 27, 2017, the IRS came out with what's called bonus depreciation. Game changer in the industry. Um, even smaller properties, like you mentioned, can now qualify. So as I mentioned, there's certain components inside the building that we're going to move out of 27 and a half year life, and we're going to put them into a five-year, seven-year, and 15-year. Not to get too technical, but the 15-year life is all of your land improvements. Not so much the land costs, but the actual land improvements, such as sidewalks, drainage, swimming pools, landscape, outdoor wiring, lighting. What the IRS allows us to do now is take, instead of waiting 15 years, and, and actually in your, and I mentioned interior was five years, it now gets compressed into year one. So everything gets to be taken in year one, which basically means, and this is going to be music to your ears. So as people come in and invest, and let's say there's a hundred thousand dollar investment or a two hundred thousand dollar, you know, down payment to take that property down, you're literally able to write off, you know, your entire down payment in year one for investors. And they're just like, oh my gosh, like really? Like, you know, so it's it's um, you know, it definitely has added uh, a lot of of excitement around cost irrigations definitely gave it a, a, a real boost around that. Yeah, no, no, no kidding. But you do need to do a cost irrigation to get the bonus depreciation or can you do one without the other? Okay, so great question. Um, you know, you have to have a cost. Set. There's no other way around it. You, you can't just make up numbers because every, you know, it still needs to be calculated out. There is an engineering approach to the, the method of the madness. And so, yeah, you would pay a company like ours to come in and do it correctly and break apart all these components. We're, we actually put it into, um, we have a narrative that we build around it. It's about 150 pages and that becomes the audit trail. Um, so if the IRS ever came sniffing and they're saying, hey, Michael, what's this, you know, $500,000, you know, in depreciation on your tax returns, you know, we would be able to defend that right down to the penny because that is, that is the, the balance sheet. That is the audit trail. Everything in the building is accounted for when we break out um, a in our cost seg report. So that's the value of bringing us in because it's very, very detailed um, and we don't miss anything. So when we follow the IRS technique and guidelines, we can be very aggressive, but never over the edge. So we stay within the, this is all in the code. You know, this is nothing. People sometimes think this is aggressive or it's going to trigger uh, an IRS audit. Um, the beautiful thing, I'll touch on this while I'm thinking about it. If you bought a building, let's say two years ago, three years ago, and you've been depreciating the old method, what the old method, we actually can go back in time to the date of acquisition and we can recalculate all the missed depreciation. The IRS will allow a one-time consent, automatic consent. They won't challenge this without amending returns. So it's just a nice, smooth, clean uh, catch up in depreciation that you get to take in whatever the current tax year is. And then that has a 20 year carry forward as well. And it, legally and technically the IRS, this is, I still chuckle over this. They'll actually let us go back to 1987, 1987 and pick up Mr. Appreciation. Now we don't go back that far anymore, obviously, but we will go back 10, 12, 13 years and recalculate and redo all that depreciation. And it's a big number. That's that's it. Really, actually, insane. Uh, wh it's when crazy. does all this expire? Like, when's the gravy train end here on the bonus depreciation? 
Um, well, so that does start to phase out. Uh, we have about four more years. It starts to wind. It, it goes down. It dips about 20% for the next five years. You know, but the IRS, I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for 14 years. And I've seen other tax incentives, which we'll touch on. They come and go. They get extended. They they, they, they get, they terminate. They come back. There's a, the cost seg world in the, in the code has just been, it's been, um, it always gets better. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's every two, about every two years, there's another little caveat that comes out that is 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 a benefit to uh you know cost segregation uh it's it's crazy the other one was on remodel so i can touch on that too is, is what's called disposition um <clears throat> so when we come in and we do a, a look and when we do a cost seg inside the cost seg space there's other little tax codes and provisions that we can pick up when you're renovating and replacing uh, such as hvac let's say a roof a, um, a lighting system uh, all those little things, there's what's called disposition incentives, which just calculates into more money for the investors to offset uh, Uncle Sam. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. That is actually a blue bill thing. And what I love about that is we do this bonus depreciation. You can write off, I don't know, like 90% of the building in year one. And and so your passive investors then, what you get their K-1, their tax document, and you, you know, you're distributing, let's say, $10,000 a, a year on cash flow, and they're showing this giant taxable loss on their k1 like i mean there is this is one of the reasons i love i love this asset class i yeah. think oil used to be better in tax treatment before this came about uh, came about but now there's really nothing better with regards to the tax treatment of an asset yeah i agree it's uh it's insane i mean on how so that works tell us about the process of this a little bit like also the those the, so the process and maybe the cost so people kind of know hey uh if i want to do this for my building what does that look like and give me an idea of kind of the range of how much this costs yeah, process is real simple. Uh, all we need is the purchase price, purchase date, address. We actually have software, Michael, that we will we'll actually drop it in. We have all the IRS industry standards built into our software. So everything that's up to date in terms of the tax code, it we actually build it into our system. So we're always staying on top of the tax code. It's As you know, it's 70,000 pages. It's, it's ever changing. And so when we spit out a benefit analysis, um, it'll actually tell you first year cash savings if you qualify for bonus depreciation or not so in some cases you qualify for 50 percent bonus and not 100 if you purchase it after like i said september 27th of 17 you automatically qualify uh, for bonus depreciation so th that's number one that's step one we only need a, some, a little bit of information from somebody then we show the benefit you can actually see net present value to do it or not to do it then we move forward Every project, you know, our fees are not contingent. They're just, it's a fixed cost based on time, travel. Um, you know, we have engineers that we fly them all around the country. So, you know, we do this national. And, um, you know, typically people always say, you know, gosh, Terry, what, you know, what are you gonna charge us for this? It, it, it's because there's, there's different variables. It's, I can't just blurt out a, 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 a number, um, but it's typically like a, you know, it, in some cases it's like a 15 to one return. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, you, you, it's, it's huge. I mean, these are, it's a big return, just like multifamily. If you buy it right, um, you know, it, it, you get a big fat return. And, uh, but we, you'll know that number, you'll know our fee prior to, uh, you know, obviously us going and going to the next step. Yeah, I mean, if, if uh, just based on, on working with you guys, you guys um, um, basically you, you have a, a, a almost like a cost benefit analysis call where someone can schedule a call uh, with you guys and you'll ask a few questions like like you said, and then you'll quickly tell us, hey, uh, here's how much it's going to cost and here's what the benefit's going to be. And so if someone can see it, you can see the ROI black and black and white pretty quickly. Is that right? Yeah, we always do a kickoff call. Everybody's on the same page. We go over the numbers. We answer all questions. What about this? What about that? How's this going to work? You know, what about that? And it's a, everything is kind of uh, on the table. We never have issues. The projects, you know, knock on wood, but never, and never, and nothing ever goes south because we we always intake up front, and then everybody's on the same page, including the the CPA. Typically, we always invite their their accountant if they want to become. Uh, uh, a little bit more educated or they want to be on the call. Um, you know, CPAs, they love this stuff. They, they're they all over it. They understand depreciation better than anybody. You know, we're not an accounting firm. So there's only certain things, you know, we, we do all the engineering calculations. We put everything together and we hand it off to the, the CPA. We like them to be, a, 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 you know, 
we like them to be involved up front. We always like to know, hey, was the property purchased with a 1031 exchange? That's important because that adjusts the basis. We wanna make sure that our tie to number, when we go ahead and start to run the report, everything matches up accordingly. And at the end, when we hand off the study, it's spot on. And this is good advice, perfect. by the way, involving your CPA, uh, because not every, not every CPA, uh, if, if, they have no, if they don't have any experience with commercial real estate, is, is may be familiar with cost seg. And so involving them early on, making comfortable with it, is a really good advice. One of the things I hear also uh, is people saying, well, that's great. Bonus depreciation is, is great while I'm owning the asset. But when I sell it at that point, I got to pay an enormous amount of tax. So is it really worth doing all this uh, stuff or should I just, you know, write it off, uh, you know, over time. So I'm not hit with this giant tax bill at the end. How, how would you respond to that? So whole time is three to five years is what I tell my clients. You're going to get enough time value of money within those three to five years. If you're going to buy the building, you're going to flip it. I don't recommend it. There is something called, you know, the word of recapture. That's some people think that's a bad you word. You said the word recapture. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> However, when you break up, when you do a cost segregation correctly and you're moving components out of the real property and you're putting them into personal property, those assets now have a declining balance and the personal property, those, those values ultimately will, will, will tend to be minimized and, and minimal. So when you go to sell, you'll have, we actually you know, advise our clients on how to do this. We can run recapture analysis. You'll have more uh, into the real property and less into the personal property when you go to sell it. Therefore, you're going to minimize recapture because recapture is on the personal property and that's on the, and you're going to get taxed at ordinary income. There's a way to minimize that ordinary income pop through um, breaking this apart. So you're, you know, you can minimize the, the, um, um, you know, what that's going to look like when you go to sell the building, you can minimize it drastically. So there's still this, this Delta of you're, you're going to be so far ahead of the game when you're, when you're in that whole time of about three to five years. All right. Can, can we maybe talk specifics without having a spreadsheet or calculator in front of us, but you mentioned the word recapture and if you Sorry. weren't going to do it, I was, but can you maybe explain uh, how it works given some rough numbers and no one's going to check your math, but just a principle of the matter, if you buy a building and you do a cost seg, you take bonus depreciation, you hold it for, let's say, five years, uh, what is recapture? How does that work? And how are then uh, taxes calculated at the at the end? Oh, man, that's that would need a little bit of a spreadsheet because it's going to be <laughs> it's, there's so many numbers involved. My head just went, you know, you're going to get so whatever the bonus depreciation is, you, you've taken that money in today's dollars. Well, that's so you're going to be ahead of the game. Just on that note, you're going to have to pay back. X amount of dollars based on what you've already taken. All I'm saying is that your, your impact is going to be lessened by the fact that those assets that we already moved is going to be drastically, the values of those assets are going to be reduced. So it's not dollar for dollar when you actually took the depreciation. And I don't want to get too into the weeds. I don't want to get too technical. Um, you know, that, that could be a, a, for a whole nother, you know, podcast on how we can break that down. And I can come prepared and actually show an example. If you bought a building for $5 million and if, if you actually exited in three years and here's, a, and here's how the personal property now is going to be put on the books. At the end of the day, it's all how it's being booked on the schedules at the accountant level. So we work with CPAs all over the country on how to do this correctly through our work on the engineering side. So gotcha. it's a real great blend on how to do all this. And that's when we get into opportunity zones. Okay. There's, there's, there's hand in glove tax planning. Yeah. Um, when there's 1031 issues coming together, how do we hand in glove cost seg to maximize when they're going into the next property? You know, so there's, there's, it's, there are, um, it's not one size fits all. There's always a little bit of planning, but that planning is monumental. So the recapture is where your, your, your cost basis is reduced essentially by the bonus depreciation, which means theoretically when you sell it at a, at a profit, your profit span is higher than it was before. But now is this true? I've heard this, that if you sell a property and then buy a property in the same year, again, using bonus depreciation, can you not offset that gain on that recapture from that deal that you sold? Yes, yes, you can. 
Okay. Yeah, that becomes so, that, that that becomes you know very very powerful too. So let's talk about some of the exits because one obviously is a ten thirty one exchange. Obviously, is is certainly one, but one is this exact thing. And I was just talking just through, through my own mastermind. Uh, someone was had this giant tax bill because they failed to actually buy enough property to offset the gains from the previous one. But if you buy them in the same year and you take that giant bonus depreciation, you can then offset any kind of capital gains, right? Again, using bonus depreciation as a tool on purchase to offset the gain of the sale. Again, it's all timing window, like you just said. So there, there is a there is a benefit from if you can do it that quick in the in the same tax year. A lot of times people can't do it in the same tax year, but the the the, the tax ramifications. There's always you always got to pay Uncle Sam. They always want their piece at some point. But when you're moving into the next, you know, you're doing another cost seg cost seg study. There's always the next chunk of depreciation that you're going to be able to use to offset that income coming through. And what's beautiful about cost segregation as a, as a, uh, as an active investor, you know, you can use depreciation from one building to offset income from other buildings, from other entities that are coming through to the LLCs, to the, to the end users, to, I mean, to the, uh, to the shareholders. So it's, it's, if you play it right, you're always, you know, you're always deferring, you're always deferring and you're always minimize, mitigating and minimizing your, uh, your liability. So we had uh, this internal discussion uh, whether it's good to just to take the bonus depreciation up front in year one, take it, or just to, to apply the cost segregation and apply it over, let's say, the whole period of five years. What is what is your your thought on that? You can elect out of bonus depreciation if you want to. I think it comes down to the entity and what their sit personal situation is. That That's really where the accountant would come in and we like to get their input because they know intimately what's going on behind the curtain with each investor and how it's going to impact them. You know, our job obviously is just to calculate, get as much as depreciation as we possibly can by leveraging the tax code. And then that's why we love working with the accountants. Then we can help put that plan together and how to best uh, from a whole period to exiting the property, what makes sense. Because sometimes it just absolutely does make sense because the gain is so large because you've held that property maybe for so long that you, it really does make sense to buy a 1031. And you're probably going to overpay for the next property because you only have a short window to, as you know, to find that property and to lock down that property. So that becomes very stressful, but sometimes it is what it is. You just, 1031 is the best play and other times it's not. And, but, but cost seg is always the right play for the most part, as long as there's income. Yeah, the cost seg is, is, I think that's the, the, the primary me message here of, of this thing is cost seg is always the right play. Uh, and I would advise everyone listening and watching this to build it into your deal. So the cost of the cost seg, build it in as a closing cost, acquisition cost, whatever you want to call it, because it always, almost always makes pace, uh, makes sense. We had an internal discussion about, you know, whether we should do the, the bonus appreciation up front or spread it out. And, and you're right. The right answer is really depends on the on who the investors are. But in a syndication, there's almost impossible to please everybody. And and so we decided, hey, just take it up front. And my understanding is you can take the the, the losses and carry them forward if you can't use them. Is that right? You can. Yeah, you have a 20 year carry forward. So yeah. So you, I don't. I don't. You, there was really no reason to spread out the cost seg over whatever five year period. Just take yeah, it year one. And that, in our estimation, makes the vast majority of investors happy. Those who can need it this year get it, and those who don't, they can use it down the road. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And the, I love you know, that. And the, and the very people always ask, you know, what Terry, what's the best time to do the cost seg study? It's usually right when it goes into service. Now it depends on if it's if you're going to be doing major renovations. Um, some people say, well, let's just wait till the renovations are completed. And it really depends because sometimes if you're going to be doing, you know, at the end of one tax year and then the renovations aren't going to be complete, uh, completed in, into the next tax year, sometimes we do partial cost segs or we'll do, we'll do the as built and the disposition. And then you're the next tax year, let's say it's going to be done in six months, but the, the books are going to be closed. So you're going to get depreciation for the ownership in, in that tax year. And then you get, you can, then we finish the cost seg when all the improvements are done. So we essentially are doing two cost segs. It's just a time, you know, there's a lot of flexibility when it depends on the time of year you're actually closing the, the deal. And that, those are some of the things that you can explore on the call when people call you guys. Uh, that's, that, that's something you guys can say, hey, why don't we do this? Yeah, yeah and, 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 and I love this dialogue that we're having. So the listeners can really get a sense of, you know, this, 
there is planning around this. This, this, the, everyone kind of, there, there are options um, to this based on, it's not just, oh, hiring a cost seg company, they just run out there and, and do the cost seg and then they're gone. Um, th there really needs to be some due diligence up front. That's the way we approach everything. We want to know who's involved. And, um, and we always like to know who the, the, you know, who the accountant is because usually there's one CPA firm that's handling the syndication, which is you're not dealing with, you know, 10 different CPAs, that would be crazy. Um, now the, each of them all have their own individual accountants. And sometimes we have to, you know, we will then talk to, we have no problem talking to their individual CPA just to see how this is going to impact. Some of this is based on their income levels and what tax brackets they're gonna be in and what the spouse is. I mean, there's just a lot of different variables um, that come into this, but it's very easy as long as it's worked out up front. Yeah, and this is one, one of the reasons we like working with you guys. You have a very consultative approach. You're not just a cost seg, per, you know, engineer sends one out there. You're really asking a lot of more strategic and planning questions, which is super helpful. Um, you talked about uh, changing tax laws and, you know, this big bonus appreciation in 2017. Are there any other changes in tax laws or other ways that investors can save money using something like what you guys are doing that maybe people don't know about? So the one that just came back into the tax code is called uh, 179D, not to be confused with 179, because that's a, that's an that's an expensing where you can expense. You don't need a cost set company to do this expensing, um, and you get up to a million dollars on that. That, that. That's separate. 179D came into the code back in geez 2006. Um, the IRS and the Department of Energy kind of came together and collaborated and came out with really the first federal energy efficient green building certification federal tax program. So basically just means that if you put LED lighting in your building and you're in your multifamily and and you put uh, and you've maybe replaced the HVAC and you've updated um, the HVAC system and 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 or the building envelope. So windows, insulation, doors, that kind of thing. The IRS says and, and, and honors that you can get a, a dollar eighty a square foot um, per a dollar eighty per square foot up to the cost of the improvements. Right. So if you got a hundred thousand square feet, if you can qualify for the full dollar eighty, it's one hundred eighty grand in additional depreciation that has a, an additional twenty year carry forward. So when we when we approach all of our jobs, we're naturally, our engineers are trained to start looking at, okay, what kind of renovation costs? Because some of those assets now are what we consider real property, which has to depreciate over the long term. You can't accelerate some of those. With 179D, we're now actually accelerating those long-term assets. So we're, we're double dipping as many components as we possibly can. We just have to go through a certification process. So I have, I have, you know, my engineers will go out there and we take a look at, okay, what, what are, what type of LED lighting tubes did you put in there? Um, what type of H, HVAC that got upgraded? Um, did you guys re, did, did, were the appliances, you know, uh, replaced? So as long as the building now is using less energy, and it's a sliding scale from 25% to 50%. If you fall in those in that bucket 25 to 50% you get a all or a piece of that buck 80. So the lighting has 60 cents on the table. The HVAC, the heating and cooling of the building has another 60 cents available on the table per square foot. And then the building envelope has another 60 cents on the table per square foot. And so if you're doing a major rehab, there's, there's more, there's more juice on the table that, uh, and that just came back in the code. Um, it expires at the end of the year, which they always play these games. Then, the, then it comes back into the code. They, they retroacted it back to, to, to 18, beginning of 2018. And with a little tax tip, tax uh, little caveat, little, uh, I don't wanna call it a secret, but a little method that we use, it's called the change of accounting. And the IRS will, will allow us to go actually all the way back to 2006 and do a 481 adjustment. So imagine all the properties out there that have gone through some sort of energy efficiency upgrade that potentially could qualify for some of this new found money for going green or, or at least putting energy efficiency. Now I don't wanna get, you know, again, we, we will certify the building. We, we will do a, a no cost analysis to see where you fall 
and how much money you can qualify for. And then we can talk about, you know, how it works and in the in more detail that we need to actually get you the dollar. But it, uh, it works similar to cost seg as far as how we approach it. And we're just, we're just capturing more components in the building that can be written off in year one. Essentially, that's what we're doing. And you can maximize for as much as square footage that's been impacted as we possibly can. And, you know, again, we go through that, uh, we go through that process. So, but not to get too technical, but hopefully that gave your listeners a, a couple more ideas of when they're renovating their buildings, this is the type of opportunities that, you know, and a lot of, a lot of times those renovations do include HVAC, as you know, um, roof, anything, and anything that can impact the energy cost falls into this 179D uh, service. Uh, Terry, that's amazing. Uh, some of that stuff was a little bit over my head, but I, what I hear you saying is that the cost seg or the process of this analysis has other tax ramifications, uh, regardless of whether the property is small, large, and what you're saying on the last one, if there's heavy renovations where we're reducing the energy in some sort, there may be additional tax benefits as well. So I love that. And you're always looking for ways to kind of help save us, legally help us save money. Now, I know that you we talked about the getting started and is a great way to do this, this uh, consulting call that you have. How can people start that process if they want to call you and saying, hey, does a cost seg uh, make sense for my building? What would be the next step for, for them? OK, so they can find they can they, they, they can take this next step at the the cost seg guy. So www.thecostsegguy.com forward slash Michael. And that's where they can sign up for a no cost benefit analysis on all the stuff that we just talked about. And I know that's it's awesome. a lot. Awesome. So I just, for a little disclosure, that is an affiliate link. So if you guys were to sign up with, uh, with core solutions, I do get paid a little bit of a, uh, a fee for that. Uh, again, it doesn't cost you anything extra. And the only reason I'm doing it is because we work with you guys now with core for quite a few deals. You guys are doing a great job for us. You're nationwide. You're always responsive. You're always looking for ways to help us save money. So Terry, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and helping us educate us about cost seg. Uh, lessons for me was, Hey, it's, even for smaller buildings right now, and uh, and it's it almost always makes sense to take the bonus appreciation right away. So thanks very much for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been awesome. Enjoyed it. So this bonus depreciation thing is magical. It's absolutely magical. There is no other asset class in the entire world that gets as favorable tax treatments as real estate, multifamily real estate. But you do need to do a cost segregation analysis to claim it. And we chose to kind of take it all in year one. And if an investor can't use it, it carries over. You do need a cost segregation study. So I do encourage you guys to head over to um, uh, two core solutions at the cost set guy forward slash Michael. That's the cost set guy forward slash Michael. Again, it is an affiliate link. So I will get paid a little bit if you sign up. But I encourage you guys to set it up a free call with these guys. Uh, because they're going to look at your property. You, know, you have to own the property, obviously, and they're going to ask you a few questions. It's a kind of a painless process, and they'll say, hey, here's how much it's going to cost. Here's the uh, the benefit, the tax savings that you can get to justify this expense. And like I said, it almost always makes sense. And now it really makes sense for much smaller properties as well. Uh, before, it was just much larger properties. And they can advise you on other things, especially if you're doing a heavy renovation. So these guys really know what they're talking about. Really like working with Terry and, and the team, so and I think you might enjoy that as well. Um, also, before you go, if you really value mentoring, I, I encourage you guys to check out our mentoring program. It's at the michaelblank.com forward slash mentor, and it's really for people who have the ability to invest in themselves. I always say it's the best investment you can make uh, versus putting it even in a property is an investment you can make in yourself. So if you have the ability to do that and you value mentoring, then go to the michaelblank.com forward slash mentor and, and schedule a free strategy session with us. If it's not right for you, we'll point you in the right direction. So it's going to be probably the, 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 one of the best 30, 40 minutes that you'll spend here in the near future. Check that out. Uh, our students are just getting really accelerating their results. We're just really proud of our program. And one of the things that's different about it is we actually have a system, a process uh, for bringing people up to speed. And we guarantee that you'll do your first deal in the next 12 months. Uh, we have only have full-time syndicators coaching for us, people whose names you might recognize. It's very unusual, and we get them just uh, just because they want to help people uh, do their first deals and quit their jobs. So if that's for you, check out themichaelblank.com forward slash mentor. All right, you guys, appreciate you, and uh, I will catch you on the next episode.